What's poppin' everyone? Blood Hill Plays back for PBO week one. If you have not heard, uh, I am in the PBO. Uh, it is a Pokemon Draft League style format on Showdown 6v6 singles. Has some very unique rules, um, but if you want to check out the rules for that, you can. I'll make sure to have a link in the description below to uh, Soren Flying's uh, video going over the rules. There's some pretty unique rules that make this a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, make sure you look at that if you're interested on in what the actual rule sets are. Uh, so we are going into week one. We are also technically champion from the first season, but obviously that was not like on YouTube. That was just kind of like um, like that we did over the summer for the first time. It was really fun. Then we kind of opened it up. I think we did like a Reddit post. We got a lot of good people in, but it's still definitely a mix of competition between uh, people that are really like very competitive at the game and people that are very new so it's very um very unique that different uh types of people will be playing the game but um yeah i think i me and soren already did a draft video uh going over all the teams um and if you've seen that video then you know what my team is but this is essentially my team so we have uh sneezler uh that's because the format is post draft paldea but it is actually just Gen 9 Mons. It's only, let's see, Scarlet and Violet Gen 9 Mons, but then including the Hisuian forms or most of them. I don't think we banned any of them. And then we banned some Ubers and some questionable ones, but um, th there's like a, we have a dock and um, there's like tier list for stuff. You can see that like a lot of the Hisuian forms that are technically not released yet are uh, still on here. But going through my team, Sorry, this is like super rushed too. We, we were supposed to battle in like 30 minutes and I have not. I made this team like a week ago and then like I've had no time, I've been so busy with school and I literally just got done with like a important project testing literally like just now. So I have to quickly make this video before we actually battle. Um, so let's go through our team first. We have Sneasler, uh, Braviary, Hisui, Rotom, Mo, Klefki, Lycanroc, Pyroar, Samurott, Hisui, Tatsugiri, Scyther, Sandakana, and Kabomdol. This is also a really cool doc for prepping. Um, I might also leave it in the description to help people out. But yeah, I plan on making these videos like more educationally so people will get better at the game, especially there are newer people in the league. So I know I'm not the, like, the best player by sure, like by far, but uh, hopefully it'll help people out a little bit, even though I'm nowhere near perfect. But um, yeah, this is our squad. Overall, uh, our team is not great. I was like kind of rushed during drafting. Um, I just, for Bonneville pick is just terrible. And obviously you could see from this of just like my weaknesses here, electric fighting, you know, I have a bunch of shit, so I don't know what was going on with me, but uh, yeah, team is okay. Um, Sneasler is also very offensive, very, very, very uh, unique, has two good abilities, Rotomo, Klefki, blah, blah, blah. It's an okay team. Overall, there's definitely some gaps. Um, you can see who our stealth rockers are, spikes, toxic spikes, um, and all this stuff over here are pretty useful. So we actually have a pretty fast team, um, but our opponent's team is the Frederick Klefkies, and their squad is this. So they have Dragonite, Scizor, Crookedow, Cloyster, Passimian, Wigglytuff, Iron Moth, Decidueye, Electros, Ticketuff, and Grumpig. Uh, we also have Terra Captains. Um, their Terra Captain is Dragonite, and it's either normal or flying, uh, meaning you can only bring one, and also it's a best of three, so that, that Terra typing has to stay uh, for all three games as well. I think it will be normal. I'll explain that in a little bit. But just based off their squad, um, you can tell. I think they they definitely have been in a couple draft leagues before because you can see they have like almost every type and they have no weaknesses, <laughs> which is kind of what uh, my draft was supposed to look like. But obviously they're much, much better at it than me. They have a bunch of stealth rockers. Um, Spike sucks, Spike's very useful. And obviously one of the best uh, terror typing mods in the game and Dragonite. Um, so looking at their team, uh versus my team you can see that i literally don't have a ghost type and uh my only kind of resistance to normal is lycanroc and clucky which if dragonite just puts eq on it hits those pretty pretty hard so uh dragonite's definitely coming <laughs> um we're definitely probably gonna get wrecked by it but we're gonna try our best but um just in terms of what I think they're going to bring, because I think it's good against me. Dragonite's definitely coming. I would be shocked if it's Terra flying. 
Uh, I really think it's going to be Terra Normal because I have literally so little resistances to um, normal, but also I have the same amount of resistances to flying. So yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Um, should be a good match, by the way. Uh, very good play that we were playing up against. So, um, but we are. I guess uh, I'll kind of go over what I think they're going to bring, and then I'll explain my set. So I think they're going to bring Dragonite. It could be a Roost Dragon Dance set, probably with Earthquake or Extreme Speed. Uh, definitely bring most likely Heavy Duty Boots because it doesn't want to break the multi scale. Very important. We also have item item claws for um, this league, meaning you can only bring one item for or a different. Every mon has to have a different item, um, so that's pretty unique. But I'm thinking the Dragonite will have heavy duty boots because you want to keep the multi scale most likely. Uh, may not, but I think it's going to be adamant. Most likely going to do roost, earthquake, extreme speed, dragon dance. So Dragon Dance is, or Dragonite's actually really good against my team, but the only problem is that it has like really bad four move syndrome, and it really wants like all four moves to be attacking. So for example, uh, most likely gonna run Extreme Speed just so it can outspeed my Sneasler, but I think even after a plus one, uh, it still outspeeds my Sneasler. But I'm thinking just in case my Sneasler gets an unburden boost, they're still gonna want to run Extreme Speed. Um, but yeah, essentially my resistances to E-Speed are Clef Key and Lycanroc, uh, which it can run Earthquake for, but uh, in my team breakdown, I'll show that I'm actually running a... Uh... <sighs> it's some gravity move, it helps you Magnet Rise, there it is. Um, and like, just in case they have Extreme Speed, Earthquake, and Fire Punch to hit my Clef Key, then I think my Sanaconda, which I am also bringing, should be able to wall pretty pretty decently enough to prevent us from getting swept so um that's what i think they're going to bring for the dragonite set i think it's definitely going to be a d dance uh heavy duty boots adamant set uh next i definitely think they're going to bring iron moth because i think one of my few resistances to fire types or i know my few resistances to poison types are rock resist poison that doesn't seem right I have like very few resistances to both uh, poison and fire. Klefki is obviously weak to the fire side. So I think Iron Moth is coming, probably coming with a booster energy. Also maybe a setup variant with agility. Uh, may also come with toxic spikes, which are not bad against my team. I mean, I do have Sneasler, but once I uh, Terra, which ugh, I forgot to say, my Sneasler can either be Terra fighting or flying. Um, but uh, yeah, he, he could bring that. That's what I'm really kind of expecting. So Iron Moth with most likely a booster energy. Could also be a subset, which might be problematic, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, also recording this before the battle. I think I already said that, but next I'm definitely thinking that their Crocodile will come. Um, I definitely think it's their best stealth rocker. Um, and like the reason why I'm thinking like they so they could also bring Tinkatuff or Wigglytuff but in terms of my Sneasler uh once I Terra fight close combat uh even Eviolite fully defensive Tinkatuff is a two hit KO which is pretty insane and they the the funny thing about like this um this matchup is like I have nothing for their Dragonite so I have to check it offensively and then they have nothing for my Sneasler so they're gonna have to check me offensively as well um so pretty, pretty, uh, gonna be a crazy match for sure. Probably a lot of predicting and just like off offensive garbage. But yeah, I think they're gonna bring uh, Crocodile, uh, most likely Stealth Rock, Earthquake Crunch, maybe Gunk Shot to hit my Rotom or Taunt to prevent my Rocker. Uh, but my Rocker is only between these two, so they kind of have a good understanding of who I'm gonna bring. Um, next, I think Electrox is pretty good just because it has. Um, I could get a uh, Volt Switch, Fire Move, Grass Move, uh, and that coverage just completely wrecks my team. So I think that could be coming just a uh, 252 HP, 252 Special Attack, just Modest Set, um, maybe AV, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, next, I definitely think uh, Passimian could come as a Fast Choice Scarfer, uh, U-Turn, Close Combat, maybe Earthquake, Knock Off or Rock Slide. Um, I don't think it's bad, especially you want something faster than my Sneasler just as a backup. I definitely think something uh, Scarf is coming, but we'll see. Then I think they're going to bring Cloyster, um, definitely Skill Link, Shell Smash. 
if it's focus ash i think that's a little bit scary i kind of predicted it'd be white herb but yeah if it's a uh, shell smash focus ash i don't have rock up rocks up that's pretty scary um but yeah that's what i think they're bringing and then let's go over what i decided to bring so week one um we obviously have to I, I essentially i was like okay well first of all we have to watch the checks for dragonite so of course we're bringing klefki we have foul play um this will definitely break sub is foul play physical why is this how does that work i'm gonna check this damage calc i don't understand why this is minus attack if foul play is physical weird i'll have to look at that um we're bringing light clay reflect light screen i also need to rename these guys Reflect light screen can just be useful for through throughout the match. They also might bring reflect light screen, which is something that I was thinking. Um, in terms of their other mons, I think Wigglytuff as well as Grumpig can get it, and I think that really helps with my Sneasler. Um, sorry, where are we at? Uh, I think that really helps with my Sneasler, but um, yeah, I think uh, I was also thinking of running Brick Break over U turn, but. I think U-turn is pretty good on Sneasler, but Magnet Rise, obviously, so we're not weak to the Earthquake, and Dragon Dance, or Dragonite cannot set up on us for Dragon Dance because we'll be continuously doing more damage with Foul Play. And of course, if they have Fire Punch for this, then we switch into our Sanacana, which is Rocky Helmet, full defense EVs. Uh, we actually have Sand Spit, which is really good with our Lycan Rock that gets Sand Rush. Um, but yeah, we have Sand Spit, Rocky Helmet, South Rock, obviously, Rock Blast is in case Dragonite is Substitute. Uh, or roost um, we deal pretty good damage with it and especially if it terra flying then we can do super effective damage even if it doesn't terra and obviously if it's terra normal we can just go for body press uh, we also even have glare uh, this does pretty well against crook too the only problem is we have to watch out for being taunted so i think for turn one we'll always body press but we'll see when we get there sand spit really important because uh lichen rock actually has a really good chance to sweep depending what they have um, so I have Focus Sash, Sand Rush, uh, Speed Creeping, Iron Moth, just like barely. Uh, Play Rough, Swords Dance, Stone Edge, and Excel Rock. This is also like my main check to Iron Moth. Um, pretty sure like 90% of the time, if Iron Moth is like 50% HP, I can just come in here and Excel Rock. Um, especially if it's Booster Energy is not in speed, I just outspeed and kill with Stone Edge. But yeah, that's pretty much Lycan Rock. This is also a good check to Dragonite 2. Kind of forces it to Terra. Uh, and that's why I also think it's gonna be Terra normal because like if I just bring Excel Rock and it's I think it maybe in Sand Rush I think I still outspeed it but uh yeah especially for the E speed like this thing just resists so we'll see what happens but just my thoughts behind it okay now here's the heat here's the heat Sneasler uh, Terra fighting uh, one of our close comments to do hella hella damage or speed creeping whatever is the fastest thing on its on their team iron moth um obviously we're not outspeeding uh scarfers but close combat swords dance obviously if we set up a swords dance uh we're doing hella hella damage with our terror fighting anything that's like a two hit ko is now just like a one shot so they're gonna have to check me offensively and i'm gonna have to check them offensively as i said before but um yeah close combat terror fighting just destroys everything Chalon Berry is actually a super cool tech and it's like very very gimmicky and it's really really based on the fact that they want to e-speed my Sneasler instead of like so so if I think they're if if they bring Terra Flying good on them because then they can just set up Terra Blast and then just kill me but I think Terra Blast is not as good because I do have like in Rock and Santa Conda. maybe I'm thinking in terms of my own team but I have Chalon Berry because I can bring Sneasler in and if they e-speed I actually leave it live it even after a plus two and then since they're normal type Terra type <laughs> I can close combat and kill them it's very very gimmicky it also procs my unburden boost which could be useful um, later on uh, ultimately we it's best of three so like if this does not work out the first match I'll just switch out um, but yeah, but close combat swords dance, dire claws, the new move that has 50% chance to sleep poisoner or, or uh, paralyze, very good move. Also thinking about running brick break in case they bring screens. I think if game two 
I'll just keep what I have right now. If they bring screens next time, I'll probably brick break. Fake out could also be good to get rid of um, multi scale. I'll kind of see if U turn was kind of useful. Game one and then figure it out game two. But yeah, also toxic spikes could be good, but uh, they have iron moth, which is grounded poison. So I thought about not bringing it. Next, we have Rotom Mo, Leftovers, Volt Switch, Leaf Storm, Sub, and Will O Wisp. Um, I think the main reason I have Sub out is because. Oh, I know Crook outspeeds me. I think it was more for Electros to scout on Electros. It's like a scouting reason. Um, I think it was to scout on Electros or just have the ability to scout or force something out. Uh, like I can pretend like I'm Scarf and uh, threaten I think Crook out with the Leaf Storm then sub up and then whatever comes in we could also will o -Wisp, like especially if it's uh, like I Leaf Storm into a Dragonite you know we have a chance of will o -Wisp, uh leftovers and we're 248 HP we have a slight little bit of speed just in case he wants to speed creep something that uh, like a uninvested uh, Rotom Mo but we have super high special attack um, I don't think I wanted to make this defensive or I can't really re remember why I didn't want to make this defensive but uh, yeah it's modest so that's what we're running with <laughs> next we have Braviary Hisui heavy duty boots this is our defogger um, Rue Slice Shock Dazzling Gleam uh, this EV spread obviously we want a lot of HP um, we have tinted lens so anything that's resistive will still do normal damage uh, so it makes it definitely a pretty good mon. Um, I d also didn't go with its signature move of just plus one speed. I didn't really like it that much. And the reason why is because I don't really have a great switch in to uh, Iron Moth. Just kind of more offensively and I kind of wanted this to be like the switch in. Um, we still take like hella hella damage from an Iron Moth but um the this specific spread i think we're modest specifically so after rocks uh we kill iron moth in one shot if it's uh 252 hp um and if it's not invested then it's just a guaranteed doko which is really good so yeah this is kind of like my check for iron moth but also like if it just straight up is like 252 modest and like also gets the booster energy we are obviously taking a lot so um and i don't think they're gonna bring this i think they bring like sludge wave it's like no reason yeah we're taking a lot of damage so sometimes this is a check sometimes this isn't uh, we just kind of have to play around unfortunately but yeah that is the squad essentially i don't think i'm missing literally anything else yeah foul play stealth rock uh rocky helmet it's also good uh for certain stuff sand spit is actually super important for my lichen rock then this sand rush effect is also super important i'm not bringing a scarfer which maybe i should but i thought like dragonite's priority um was a little bit too strong so like i thought the scarf would might be a little bit useless whereas his scarf is definitely more viable um but you know once we know their scarf then uh we can kind of play around that at least for whatever game we're in um but yeah braviary sui pretty cool set um do i think we're gonna win maybe that's a good question to ask uh probably not i think i just have like a giant potential to just get swept really fast dragonite's such a good sweeper Poister's such a good sweeper, as well as Iron Moth, if it gets like an agility up. Um, so that's why our main goal is to sweep first. <laughs> but uh, we also have like a natural, kind of a little bit faster team than theirs. Uh, obviously we're hitting, we have like four mons that are above base 400. Um, in terms of like what they think I'm gonna bring against them, I mean, they definitely know I'm bringing Sneasler. They definitely. I know I'm bringing Tatsugiri or Braviary Hisui. Um, you know, Tatsugiri also would have been a good check to Iron Moth. Now that I'm thinking about it, but I don't know if I want to like do it right now because I've already made the team, and like I am going to try to win, uh, but I am feeling a little bit tired. So, um, yeah, I think the play we always lead uh, Sneasler actually. 
Uh, that's like definitely gonna be our lead because we have so many options to just like instantly one shot thing because seals are so broken. Um, and yeah, I think we just like U turn off the rip. We obviously have to scout for some sashes or not sashes, uh, choice scarfs. Um, but I would very, I would find it like very interesting. Like if Crook is sash or uh, scarfed, like scarf Moxie, I'd be pretty surprised. But yeah, who knows? So yeah. Um, what else? Um, I'm gonna be putting the Steam overview before the battles. I'll probably put a timestamp. Uh, do, do 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 anything else? I don't think so. Oh yeah. Um, we are making some trades on our draft. Uh, we're getting rid of Scyther for Spide Ops, and that'll be a good additional spikes, toxic spikes, and like one of the only sticky webs user in the game. So yeah, I guess I'll also kind of, I'm just like talking to talk at this point. Um, yeah, I'm not going to talk anymore. Uh, hopefully this just jumps to the battle. So yeah, see you in the battle. Oh, it's gonna be postcom. Sorry, I'm like all over it today. <laughs> all right, it's gonna be postcom, and then I'll be here. Okay. All right, bye. All right, we are hopping into the battle. Game one. Looking at team preview. Yeah, this is postcom. But game one, I was looking at this team. I was like, okay, so he brought similar stuff to what I thought. Dragonite Crook, um, Iron Moth. Was not expecting Ticketuff because I you know dies to Sneasler to AKO and then I was kind of surprised with Decidueye um as well as Scizor but it's also because I was not well prepared for Scizor which we'll see soon but from my team I get completely wrecked from Choice Pain and Bullet Punch but at the time of doing the team building as well as during the battle I did not think it would I didn't even like realize I was like oh Scizor's Choice Pain I was like was not even thinking of that at all uh, but yeah let's go ahead and get started I lead off as I plan to do Sneasler. I actually switch out uh, because I'm I'm checking for Choice Scarf uh, Braybird. Um, so they end up going for Shadow Sneak, which makes me think they're going for I when they went for that move, I was really confused and I thought they were like potentially going uh, scouting for like Sash of just like removing my Sash for the rest of the game, uh, which I wasn't Sash, but I was like I was like okay, so he thinks I'm Sash maybe. But later on, it's just because uh, we find out he, I think he's running Shadow Sneak, Leaf Blade, Roost, and Defog. So he actually did not have anything to hit my Steam there until I Terra. Um, they then switch in, uh, they switch out of Decidueye when I go Rotom. I was assuming it's because uh, I I thought that he had nothing to hit me with, and then that, that turned out to be somewhat true. Um, they switch into Iron Moth, but of course, I am both switch Leaf Storm, Sub, and Willow. So when this comes out, I have nothing for it. So they actually go for Fiery Dance. I Volt switch out and I go into, I'm pretty sure Lycanroc. Yeah, and Lycanroc from this range should kill a uh, uh, thing. I, I didn't know if it was Scarfed or not at the time, but I am Sash, at least uh, game one. So I knew I could have lived something and killed it. And um, like, I, I just was not uh, thinking about this thing being Scarf. Like if I, I, I was, basically playing it like I was uh, Sash anyway. So it was Tinkaton. We obviously switch out into Sandaconda. Um, he Stealth Rocks up, then we Stealth Rock up. Um, the Sidgerite comes out, meaning it probably has Leaf Blade. So here I wanted to double into, I know previously he saw my switch was Rotom. And um, so they, they double out into Crook. I don't know if that was specifically for Rotom or not, but um, I double out into Klefki because I thought uh, it wouldn't have anything to hit me if I had my Klefki out. So I go Klefki, I actually Magnet Rise, and they go for Brick Break. Um, so they're assuming I'm screens, which I am. Uh, so Brick Break is definitely definitely good prep on their part. Um, I thought like after after just sitting there, I thought it would be kind of useless because I want to... Uh, like I thought about just foul playing a whole bunch, but I didn't know if I'd get any good damage off and I thought they might just switch into something else. So I decided to switch into Sandaconda. This allows me to uh, body press or glare something. Um, also lets me scout if they have uh, taunt. It ended up being uh, HP and special defense, but I obviously didn't know at the moment. So I go for body press, they switch into Sidroi. 
which is obviously a very good switch in for Sandaconda. I switch into Rotom this time and they go for the Leaf Blade. And then I think here I just go for Volt Switch because I literally have nothing to hit this with. And yeah, I switch. Let's see, go Sneasler. Uh, obviously at this point my Dire whatever uh, should just kill this thing. But they obviously switch into Tinkatuff. I think once they realize that I'm just going in on rocks like this, I'm not Focus Ash. So I think they were like, they essentially did not have to stay in to Shadow Sneak. Um, so I do go for the Dire Hit, which is kind of a bad play on my part. They obviously go into their immunity. Then I U-turn out just to sc uh, scout what this set is. It is 252 HP, 252 defense. We switch on a Thunder Wave, which is really good for us. At this point, since this is still in, I can just go for a Glare. We hit the Decidueye on the switch in. Um, and then we end up sacking the Rotom, and they go for a really good play in Roosting. I honestly thought about um, switching directly into Sneasler, I think, at this time. But I was I was really thinking about not sacking Rotom because I thought it was super obvious what I was doing. But uh, they made a really good play on their part and uh, predicted my sack. So very good play on their part. And then we go for Reflect. Um, they defog away my Reflect. Uh, I think I go for another one. Ah, I go for Light Screen this time. Then I go Sandaconda on Crook. Set up the sand. Could be useful for my Lycan Lock later. Uh, blah 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 blah. The Sidri, get up the rocks, and then here I thought they would go for defog, so that's why I wanted to get a little bit of chip. But they go for leaf blade, so uh, not a bad part, not a bad play on their part. Then we switch out into Klefki. Uh, we just go for a foul play. They end up being Colba Berry, which is pretty cool. But at this point, my foul play will just be doing more damage. Um, so I just go for reflect. They're gonna probably go for brick break, so I go into Braviary. Uh, I was thinking that this thing was Scarf at the time. I did not realize that it was Special Defensive, but we actually take a crunch pretty well. We do only a little bit of damage in terms of Dazzling Gleam, so like this was kind of a net bad for me. Um, I thought that they were Scarfed, or at least physical, but I didn't really check the calcs, so that was definitely my fault. Um, it would have showed that at least this thing was not uh, Defense EV'd. But our Dazzling Gleam uh, does a little bit of damage, but not as much as I like. And obviously they outspeed me and kill me next turn. So I go into Sneasler, uh, take the crunch. And we have pretty good offensive chances here. We just go for a close combat. Uh, they could have also gotten Sidui there, but I think after Rocks, they were dead. Yeah, they were to a dire hit. Um, and then here comes uh, Scizor, which is obviously uh, a giant weakness uh, for my team and just a choice band. Uh, Bullet Punch with like actually once they went for here I was like oh their choice ban uh, which makes a lot of sense so uh, they sand spit up they, then they go into Iron Moth I actually went for foul play instead of reflect because I thought that they would go into crook and then um, I would essentially have to keep foul and playing them to death and they would just get rid of my screens anyway I went for the foul play then I sacked my Braviary uh, they get a plus one boost doesn't really matter I go Lycanroc they pretty much sack here uh, because it will die to rocks unless they can get off their roost. Um, I think another option is maybe they could have sacked Crook, but overall this was a good play on their part. Uh, we They go into Decidueye, get the sneak off, which is uh, their main objective here is to break my sash, because earlier they saw that I came on their Iron Moth. I didn't know that they were Scarf, but from their perspective, they were Scarf and saw me come in and, like, like... I don't know, they just assumed that I was playing it like Focus Ash, so. Uh, then Scizor comes in, it's gonna wanna start spamming some bullet punches. Uh, we get up a Reflect, which is pretty good. And then we sack our Klefki. Now this is kind of where it comes down to Crunch, so um, essentially behind Reflect, I think my Sneasler lives one bullet punch. Um, I think, cause I think without it, I definitely die. Uh, or it's like very very close. I think the reason why they switch is I think with the reflect up I have a good chance of living. I think the high rule is like 67, but it's like a chance to kill um, So they go into Dragonite, which is actually not heavy duty boots. I later found out it was Resto Chesto uh, They take a close combat and then I switched out because I thought that they would go for an e-speed But essentially once this is dead Lycan Rock definitely dies. So I need to switch out here to essentially preserve the fact that my Sneasler could live a bullet punch from Scizor. They switch into Crocodile. I just go for a Stone Edge. They're just sacking it. Good play on their part. Then they have Scizor out. I probably should have 
uh, Excel rot tier just for chip. It doesn't. It didn't end up mattering. So um, they bullet punch here, which we take 43. Um, and I close combat because I didn't have any other move. But I think even without close combating here, I still died to the following E speed, even though I am chilling, Barry. Uh, definitely in close game. And also, if I wasn't, I think, hold on, how much did, I think I, next game I pulled up quick attack. Um, I had quick attack as my thing, but it did only 14 to 17%. So I don't think at this point there was any way for me to win, even if I had quick attack. But that was game one. Um, we took some L's. Overall, definitely not prepared for Scizor, but that's okay. Uh, I was also like not really prepared for what sets to bring if these sets didn't work. Uh, but also, you know, Clefkeys was definitely a lot more prepared for me. He had like backup sets on top of backup sets uh, in terms of the second match, which is definitely just good prep on their part. So uh, nothing wrong against doing that. But I just like when I after game one, I was like, hmm, that was pretty close. I mean. Nothing, nothing really went too bad. Uh, I think what I ended up doing, I was like, well, bull punch is really annoying. I, I could put a berry instead of my lichen rock instead of sash because they obviously keep playing as if my lichen rock is sashed already, uh, which is a smart move. I mean, it is just like a sweeper. So, um, and then my sneezler, I was like debating whether I should get rid of my chillin berry. I was like, well, it's not bad because they're always going to run E speed, uh, at least a normal type move. Then I was like, Rotom, did sub actually work? Uh, I thought that it didn't, so I swapped it out for uh, Thunder Wave, and I think that was kind of the only things I met. Switched this uh, Focus Slash out for a Berry, and then I made this Thunder Wave. But yeah, I kind of wasn't <laughs> wasn't prepared of like what to do for Scizor. I was just like, oh, Scizor came and it just wrecks my team, so I don't know what to do. But um, game two, lead off with the Rotom this time. I thought like, my Sneasler kind of forced in like maybe Tinkaduff if they just want to go directly for rocks. Um, and then here I actually switched out because I thought they would just go directly for U-turn. But instead they switched out themselves, which I thought was pretty interesting. Maybe they thought I switched to Scarf, but um, turn two, I have to switch out again because I thought that this might have Energy Ball. And I was like, well, if it does have Energy Ball, my Breviary history can definitely take one. They go for a Fiery Dance, it does 39%. Uh, so when I check that, that means that it's no HP um, EVs, meaning I instantly kill it. But I thought that they might switch out because they would know that I killed it. And also they know that like if they have Sludge Wave, they can't kill me either. So I thought it was just better if um, like they switched out. So I actually roosted here because I was thinking they were going to switch. But no, they actually go for another Fiery Dance and get a plus one boost. So that ends up not being really in my favor because now I'm going to take more damage after I kill them with Psy Shock. But, you know, it's in reality, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, the Sidroy comes in. I'm just going to sack this. I thought about going back into Santa Conda, letting them take Rocky Helmet Chip, but I thought it was too risky. Uh, even if they went for a Leaf Blade, I think they're faster than me because I'm no speed. Um, but yeah. Then we go Rotom. I was thinking that they would switch into Croak here. Especially since they don't have uh, a Volcarona switch. Aww, boo. Um, I thought they would switch into Crook here. So I go for the Willowless play. They go Tinkatuff. And then I go for a Volt switch. And then I see this time for their Tinkatuff set, they have uh, screens, which I don't know if it was on the first, uh, for the first game. But once I saw screens, I was like, oof, if this is, uh, this is going to be a problem. Especially after seeing Dragon Dance up, this was Resto Chesto. I was like, oh, I'll just glare it and I'll just start rock blasting and it should be fine. Like, once this thing hits me, I'll just go straight into Lycan Rock. Uh, but it essentially gets plus two up, hits me. Uh, it's also going to start taking sand damage, which is pretty good. But um, they Terra Normal, they're going to be taking less from the Rock Blast. Uh, I probably should have predicted. I thought they would just go for Earthquake, but it does make sense now that they're Terra Normaling to resist my Rock Blast. I think also if I went for Body Press here, that would have been pretty strong, uh, but I don't think I would have killed them. So, uh, then, especially since they have Rest Up. Then they reveal Resto Chesto. At this point, I'm like, oof. Well, uh, I need my Sandstorm up to kill this thing with Excel Rock. Or not Excel Rock with uh, Lycanroc so I can make sure that I outspeed it. 
But now I don't even know if I kill because it's um, it's uh, normal instead of flying now. So I'm like, okay, well, I need to do something about this. So I switch into Clef Key. And then here, once they go for E Speed, I'm like, well, game one, I revealed that they have Magnet Rise, that I have Magnet Rise. So why would they go for Earthquake here? They would definitely just go for um, Extreme Speed. But they actually predict or just say I was willing to sacrifice or no, I think I talked to him after the game. He said I was willing to sacrifice the Dragonite at that point to just get off the damage. So they actually make a pretty good uh, play, I guess, in terms of earthquaking instead of East being here. So um, I actually just died to that. But unfortunately, if I went for Magnet Rise there, I would have lived and then I probably could have lived like one or two E speeds after I got up a reflect and at least could have done some damage with foul play. Um, but a little bit unfortunate on my part, but not a big deal. Then we go, Decidu he goes Decidueye, saves a Dragonite, which is pretty smart play because it's definitely really, really powerful. In terms of my team, like, I'm, I have a fast team, but they have a lot of good priority, which is the way that they need to play for this match, so very good prep on their part. They defog. Uh, I think I go for Wisp because I thought they would switch here. Then they Roost, and then I'm like, well, I'm not going to Wisp again. So I both switch out, they Shadow Sneak, they only have Sneak Defog Roost again. Um, so I just go up for my Stealth Rocks. They Critical hit me with the Leaf Blade, I don't think that matters too much. I think they would have took a little bit more chip. Uh, but now we have the Sand Up, so I have Sneasler out. Uh, I was going to go for Dire Hit, but there's like no reason to. Uh, if anything, it just reduces my Sand turns. So I actually switch out and go into Sneasler. Terrify, kill this thing. Um, but at this point, so he's got uh, Choice Banded Scizor, which still wrecks my team, but I do have the Steel Berry on Lycanroc. So actually, at this percentage, if I can find a chance to Swords Dance up, I actually just completely one-shot Scizor, um, if not even a combination of Stone Edge and uh, Cell Rock. Uh, but I have to have the plus two, essentially. So. So Stone Edge had a good chance to kill after I get a plus two. And I do have the berry in. But the thing is, is like I need to find a good chance to set up. That's not Scizor, which is really, really problematic at this point because there's so many things that can just hit me for good damage. Uh, so I don't think it's possible, but uh, Scizor comes out. Of course, it's just wanna, gonna wanna bullet punch. I'm pretty sure I definitely die after I'm minus one defense. So they go for a U-turn, which is a good play on their part. I thought about staying in, but I was like, that's way too risky because if he just bullet punches here, then I like definitely lose. Um, because a uh, combination of my Stone Edge into Excel Rock does not kill Scizor. So they U turn, they go into Dragonite, and I go Sneasler. I was thinking if I went Lycanroc, there'd be kind of no point. Uh, they would just E speed. Although I could have, I think, let me check. I know this is like post com, but I always love to. Love to see if I had uh, made a mistake. So they were definitely 252 adamant. Um, so let's get rid of my reflect. If they E speed me, it's 35 to 41. And then I don't think I live uh, even after my berry. 35 to 41. But I have a berry. Uh, yeah, definitely not living that. Um, so realistically, it didn't matter here. Even if I went like rock and tried to set up, don't think it would have mattered. Less does my Dragonite. I don't think my Excel Rock. Uh... Wow. Excel Rock actually does 39. And the sand is up. What would have been my correct play here? Go in here, Excel Rock. Scizor came out, just the same issue though. Maybe I could have dire hit spam. Knowing what I know now, I could have gone Lycanroc, Cell Rock this. I don't that's if they were willing to sack it. They might have been because it's it's close to dying to rocks. I kill this, then they could go Scizor and Bullet Punch. They didn't know how that they had the berry. But I still don't think. Stone Edge kills after a plus two and it's it's down to rocks, but I don't think I kill with the combination of Stone Edge. Check that. Choice band, Stone Edge does 44. Ah uh, yeah, I definitely don't kill. Um I'd have to get a roll. Pretty strong roll. Yeah, no, not even with the roll, I definitely die. Um 
so it didn't end up mattering. Uh, but we do take the extreme speed, go for a Dark Claw, kill that. Just didn't want to go for close combat because obviously it makes me even weaker Scizor. But at this point, we're essentially dead because we are so low HP. Um, then we go Lycanroc. We just, I think we go for Stone Edge into Excel Rock. I think if we got a crit, maybe we could have, ah, uh, yeah, that's even, uh, that's calling for a lot. Uh, cause we definitely died to, uh, Shadow Sneak the following turn, but yeah. Definitely a good game on my opponent's part. Definitely a lot of good prep from them. Uh, I think my main mistakes probably just not preparing for Scizor. Uh, definitely was like over preparing for Dragonite, but I think in terms of responses to Dragonite, we did a pretty good job. Um, I think one of seeing now like what one of my weaknesses are for my team is definitely steel types. In terms of my uh, draft sheet, one of the um, bad things about it is that my steel weaknesses, I actually have um, Samurai Hisui, but they were saying like, again, speak to U-turn. Uh, also had Quick Attack for Pyroar, so even if that came, and Pyroar is like kind of the, this weird Pokemon that like, it's definitely not bad. Like it's bad on paper, but its stats aren't terrible, but I was like, ah, I don't want to bring Pyroar for this match. Definitely wasn't even really considering it. Um, also I was thinking about bringing Tatsugiri, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I was definitely worried more about Dragonite, so. But yeah, that's definitely game one. Um, so we can look at, uh, for future games, what I'm going to do is probably just prepare more, uh, try to look at each individual component of what, uh, my opponent could bring. But, uh, for week two, we actually don't have Scyther anymore. We will have Spidops. Is that how you spell it? Yep. Um, which will help our weaknesses out a little bit. Um, so I think there's less of a weakness to something. I don't know. Something went, uh, less green here. Uh, I think it was probably electric. And obviously Spide Ops is not bad because it gives us access to spikes, toxic spikes, and sticky web. And in the future, um, I think week three, it would have probably have gone by now. Um, for Crabominable, I am trading it out for Gothitelle, but it is not until week three. But yeah, this will kind of help out my situation. We're still obviously very weak to ground types, but um, we're just kind of gonna make do with that. And I think that's kind of the solid team. I'm also looking into like one more slight change, but overall, I think this might be the team, might be the squad. And I think, I think honestly, I definitely want to have more fun with my sets. Like Sneezer is really broken. You can just bring it in and murder stuff, um, which is definitely pretty freaking cool. But I think that there's a lot more to my team that I can have fun with than I thought. Um, I I think one of my main limitations with my team is like in terms of Stealth Rock, I'm either bringing Lycanroc or Sanaconda. So that's kind of like forcing me to choose one of those. But I also have like better options in Spikes and Toxic Spikes. So it's not like I necessarily need rocks to do a lot of damage. Um, but yeah, I just think for future games, I'm going to definitely want to try to spice it up a little bit. I think that's my main goal because I got a really I got some really cool Pokemon I think I just want to like kind of set them up and uh, prepare for that I like really want to try out Tatsugiri and stuff but um, definitely some hard matches so uh, we'll still have Crabominable for this next match um, but yeah I think next week we're going up against Tennessee Tyranitars I think so we will team build them for later but without further ado, thank you guys for watching the video. Stay tuned. We took an L, but we're going to bounce back. And also the light has been glaring on my forehead for 23 minutes. Sorry you had to experience that. I should have put that down earlier, but um, yeah, rip. Where's that forehead glare coming from? Oh, shit. Top window. Okay, well, whatever. I've been messing around for far too long, but stay tuned. New York Nickets, we're bouncing back week two, and then we're coming for that championship like ash catch them right now so corny all right doses goodbye like comment subscribe bye